and thank you for taking the time to watch this short video curated for Black Cultural Archives. My name is Maria Scotland and I am joined by Gemma Rose. We are barristers at Five St Andrews Hill, a leading set of chambers in London in the shadows of St Paul's. I'm deputy head of chambers. I practice exclusively in family law. I was born in 1970 in London. My father is from Dominica in the Caribbean and my mother is from North Wales. I consider myself black British because that's what I was classed as at birth and it's what I'm comfortable with. As barristers of England and Wales, our job and our passion focuses on justice and the judicial system. Our aim in discussing the Windrush scandal is to consider this topic from the point of view of the legislation and the judicial system. And we start with a quote from the present before we look back at history and then bring ourselves back to the present. On the 16th of April 2018, Theresa May stood as our Prime Minister in Parliament and apologised to the leaders of the Commonwealth for the treatment of its citizens in Britain. She apologised for their anxiety. The Windrush scheme was subsequently established to allow those who had suffered the injustices uh, we will come on to discuss uh, to apply to remain here in the UK. In post-World War II Britain, the country was in dire need of assistance in its reconstruction. The 1948 Nationality Act was passed to encourage those from the Commonwealth to come to Britain to help in the reconstruction effort. With rising inflation and unemployment in the Caribbean at the time, work prospects and a UK citizenship encouraged many to travel to the mother country to settle. The first crossing took place in 1947, but when the landmark ship, the HMT Empire Windrush, arrived in the UK on the 22nd of June 1948, carrying 492 islanders, mostly men looking for work, this marked the start of the Windrush generation. Passengers paid £28 and 10 shillings each and were armed with affidavits attesting to their good character. Those who did not have accommodation were housed in the Clapham Underground Shelter and provided food from the Women's Voluntary Service. By the 12th of July 1948, just a few weeks later, all had moved on into private lodgings and accommodation. Most gained immediate employment in mechanical engineering, transport and agriculture. This was the start of a large flow of migration from the Caribbean, which came to be known as the Windrush. 13 years later, by 1961, the numbers settling in the UK from the Caribbean under the Nationality Act of 1948 reached 200,000. And by 1971, the flow reached its peak of 548,000. Those who came were permitted to stay without any time limits and were permitted to bring their family with them at the time or later. The majority of those who made the crossing during 1947 and 1971, uh, the so-called Windrush generation, uh, were skilled workers. Uh, and yet they came and found they were given unskilled jobs in cleaning, street sweeping and general labour. They faced inequality and discrimination in the workplace and in society, which then led to race riots and unrest. The British government became fearful of the increasing number of black people in Britain and the unrest which led the government of the day to pass legislation uh, to restrict immigration under the Commonwealth Immigration Act of 1962, which limited those who were permitted to enter the UK to those who already had a job in place. There was subsequently the Race Relations Act in 1965, which prohibited racial discrimination in various public places such as restaurants and theatres and on transport. The Race Relations Act of 1968 followed that and it extended the prohibition on racial discrimination into the workplace and to housing. There was then the Immigration Act of 1971, which superseded the Commonwealth Immigrations Act of 1962. That came into force on the 1st of January 1973, and it was intended to preserve the position of the prior citizens who had settled in the UK, who had been allowed to stay without any time limit, and who were permitted to bring with them family. The Home Office guidance at the time was silent on the preservation of the prior citizens under that past legislation, though. In 1988, the Immigration Act of 1988 stripped the rights of immigrants to return to the UK after a two year period of absence. It also removed the right for wives and children to join Commonwealth citizens. 
The Home Office started to enforce this legislation against those who had arrived under historical legislation prior to 1973 to deport wives and children of previously settled citizens and remove British citizens from the Commonwealth who had been absent for more than two years. With the passing of this legislation, people who had been safely settled in the UK for decades found themselves being asked for papers to prove their entitlement to be here, which many did not have. With this, they lost their jobs, their right to housing and social assistance, and like Renford McIntyre, they became homeless. I recall this act as my passport was required at one point to be sent to the passport agency and was returned with a black line through this holder has the right of abode in the back of the passport. This meant I was no longer allowed to live and work in the UK without any immigration restrictions, even though I was born in Britain to a white Welsh mother and a British father. I was nonetheless a child of an immigrant and therefore a second class British citizen. My uncle was also a casualty of this new law. My grandfather had 16 children, 12 of whom were with my grandmother and four older sons one of whom had lived in England all of his life and in his teens and 20s, but had not bothered to apply for a passport since he did not have the means or desire to leave England. In the early 2000s, he decided he wanted to travel, but was too afraid to apply for a passport for fear of being deported. I recall then the talk amongst the family of trying to find my father's papers and him trying to apply for a passport. And I remember as a child, the fear that he felt of being deported. I recall thinking, how can this happen? Even his own sister was a member of the government. And yet this was a fact brought about by the cruelty of the Home Office and its deplorable treatment of its black Commonwealth British citizens. Under the steer of Theresa May, who was then the Home Secretary, the government continued to campaign, uh, begun in the 1980s, of creating a hostile environment for immigrants and a policy of sending them back. The new policy tasked the NHS, landlords, banks and employers to enforce immigration control by legislating that they must each ask for papers to confirm that black immigrants had the right to be in the UK. Those who did not have the required documentary proof were denied access to bank accounts, to hospitals, to tenancies and to work. The NHS were tasked with charging an immigration health charge to anyone not proving that they were British. Banks were to prohibit anyone opening an account if they were a disqualified person. Immigrants without papers were disqualified from leasing property and there were heavy penalties imposed on landlords who did not carefully observe the laws. Employers were termed labour market enforcers and were similarly charged with policing their employees to ensure that they had the right to be in the UK. Uh, and heavy penalties again were imposed on those who failed to do so, uh, which was then policed by immigration officers with spot checks. Finally, anyone here without documentary proof of the right to remain was detained and deported. Uh, at the same time as passing this legislation, the Home Office had destroyed thousands of landed cards of the settlers of the Windrush generation, thereby depriving them of access to the proof that they had the right to indefinite stay in the UK and were in fact British. The settlers who had come in the Windrush flow from the Caribbean at the invite of the British government to rebuild a post-war Britain were no longer needed. And in the new rebuilt Britain, they were treated like second-class citizens. Classified by the government of the day as illegal immigrants and undocumented migrants, where they were able, the government detained these citizens and deported them back to the Caribbean, where many had not been or lived since they were children. Britain implemented a biometric identity card system for immigrants, which underpinned a system of controls under the 2014 and 16 Immigration Acts, again enforced by banks, hospitals, employers and landlords. It was not until 2020 that this racist and disgraceful policy was finally considered by the government in its review dated the 19th of March 2020. The government opened a Windrush compensation scheme, promising to recompense those who had been adversely affected by its previous policies. However, there is still a huge backlog of cases of those who are victim to this policy seeking justice. The review of 2020 identified that the Windrush scandal was not an accident, but a deliberate policy to reduce black immigration from the Commonwealth. 
In November 2021, the Home Office Affairs Select Committee published findings that only 5.8% of those who were eligible for compensation under the scheme, that is those individuals who had suffered loss and wrongful deportation under the 2014 to 2016 legislation, had received anything. There have been recent court cases in which the Home Office have been challenged. On the 16th of December 2021, judgment was handed down in Van Riel and Annal. These were two cases brought by uh, members of the Windrush generation. Uh, they had been granted indefinite leave to remain under the Windrush scheme, um, but were both refused British citizenship because they had not been in the UK for five years at the time that they made the application. However, in both of their cases, they had been prevented from returning to the UK by the Home Office an example of the very injustices we have already heard of. Mr Van Riel was prevented entry after visiting one of his children in Jamaica. He was then stranded there for 13 years, having previously lived in the UK for over 40. Miss Toomey spent 16 years away from the UK, her granddaughter and daughter who both lived in the UK. The Home Office was of the view that the British Nationality Act of 1981 which stated that a requirement for citizenship was that the applicant was in the UK for a period of five years before the application was made, it could only be applied strictly by the Home Office and expressed deep regret for the fact that they were constrained by the parameters of the existing legislation. And challenges were brought using Article 14 and Article 8 of the European Convention on Human Rights. Article 14 referring to protection from discrimination and Article 8 is the right to a private and family life. And the High Court found that the Home Office was in breach of those protections by not allowing their applications for citizenship, given that they were prevented from being able to comply with that five-year requirement due to the government's own actions. Patrick Vernon was the first to call for the commemoration of the Windrush Day to recognise the contribution that the Commonwealth migrants had made to rebuilding New Britain. Windrush Day is now on the 22nd of June every year. The day marks the arrival of HMT Empire Windrush on the 22nd of June 1948 into England. We recognise those of the Windrush generation and their descendants. Mr Vernon launched his petition in 2013, which was finally adopted by the government in 2018 at the height of the Windrush scandal. On the 22nd of June 2022 this year, we marked its fifth year anniversary. In the recent wake of Black Lives Matter, the international social movement dedicated to fighting racism and anti-Black justice, we look to a fresh period of social justice and we hope empowering justice for all.